Hey everybody, it's me Jill and welcome to Jill Informed. This is the recap of The Real Housewives of New Jersey, Season 10, Episode 18, The Reunion Part 2. If you watch my Vanderpump Rules recaps, you're gonna hear me say this all over again, so sorry for that. But I am not at home in front of a green screen. I'm in a hotel room in Houston, Texas. I tagged along on one of my husband's business trips. He is at work right now, and I am in the room uh, talking to you guys. So later tonight, we are driving down to Austin or up to Austin. Do not know my Texas geography. So we're driving to Austin to kind of check out some neighborhoods around there as a possible area to retire. Yeah, we're still on the retirement tour, just kind of traveling to different places across the country to see what we like. I definitely want some better weather than Chicago. Personally, I would like some mountains, but that can't always happen. But yeah, so we're just, we've been getting recommendations and the Austin area is some place I've always wanted to check out anyway. So I'm excited for that. One other quick thing before I get into the recap. I just want to give a quick thank you to Misty Winters. Misty had shouted me out to Erica De Niro from Erica De Niro TV. And Erica gave me a shout out in her recap of reunion part one for New Jersey. I am so grateful for that. I know some of you guys have come over here to me from Erica's channel. I love that we are a big community. I love that with YouTube, there is room for all of us. It does not feel like a competition to me. I appreciate other recappers because, you know, we all know it is like a love-hate relationship. We love doing it, but it's a lot of work for very little money. <laughs> Um, if any, in some cases. And so it just feels good to embrace each other. And you know what? It doesn't mean there isn't room for all of us. You know, if you're good, if people like you, I listen to podcasts that talk about housewife stuff. I listen to Watch What Crappens. I listen to Bitch Sesh. I mean, there's room for all of us to talk about the housewives, there really is. Okay, so truth, I did not even know about Erica. This is no fault of Erica De Niro because her channel is huge. It's twice as big as mine. This is just a Jill problem. I am just like out of the loop usually about everything. So of course I went and checked her out, you guys. She is a delight. She has such a big personality and her laugh is infectious. She laughs and I'm laughing without even realizing it. I could listen to her voice all day long and she just has a really cute, unique, fun perspective on these shows. And, and, you guys, she recaps while she's driving. Yeah. Like, I don't know if she's driving to work, I don't know where she's going, but she like takes multitasking to another level. There's no way I could concentrate on both things. No way. Yeah, she's impressive, she's cool. Check out her channel, Erica De Niro TV, if you haven't already. I feel weird shouting her out because she's so much bigger than me, but I think you're gonna like her. It's a little bit of a different format than me and like my sweet babies, Martha and George, where we just like do one show beginning to end and then, you know, throw in our commentary or crazy voices or whatever. Erica, and again, I'm very, very new to her channel, so I don't know what she does in general, but it seems like she kind of, uh, she might talk about a few different shows in one recap. I know in the recap of New Jersey reunion part one, she does talk a little bit about Love is Blind. Are you guys watching Love is Blind? I mean, I'm done. I watched the whole season. And uh, maybe one day we'll talk about it, if you want, if you guys are into it. But yeah, so she talks about that a little bit. And I'm, she probably does a whole bunch of other shows. So uh, anyway, check her out. Erica, thank you for the shout out. And Misty, thank you for telling her about me. That was so cool. 
Okay, on with the show. Reunion part two. Of course, we're kind of picking up right where we left off. I don't know if it was a viewer or Andy who brought up to Teresa, how can you get mad at Melissa for not having your back when at that restaurant where Jennifer threw the knife and fork at Melissa, you left with Jennifer. Teresa's answer. Well, you know, Melissa's a big girl. She can take care of herself. Dude, that's not the point. You're a big girl who theoretically can take care of herself. <laughs> no, you can take care of yourself too, but you want your family to have your back. But, you know, double standard, hypocrisy, whatever you wanna call it, Teresa lives in her own world. So Jennifer does end up apologizing to Melissa. I didn't really mean to throw it at you. I threw it toward you and Andy's like, that's the same thing, throwing at or toward. Don't get mad at me. I think there is a difference. <laughs> Not just because I love Jennifer. I think picking up a knife and throwing it at somebody is different than picking up a knife and throwing it like this. It was like a, you know, like a mic drop, right? She put her arm out toward her and then dropped it onto the table. And yes, it clattered and it made dishes and everything go crazy. And yes, I believe that the knife or the fork skittered off the table and like landed on Melissa's lap or at Melissa or it just went off the end of the table toward her. I mean, maybe that's nitpicking, but there's a difference. There's a difference between holding something out and dropping it at somebody or winging it at them. Andy asks Melissa, do you accept her apology? And she said, well, I mean, are you gonna throw things anymore? Jennifer said, if we all stop, I think Margaret was kinda like, that, fine, that's good, that's good enough. We, we, I think we could do that. We could all stop throwing things at each other. So they agree to all stop throwing things at each other and Melissa, Mm, I mean, she accepts her apology, but it was one of those things where, you know, they're not all good. They're not going to be hanging out anytime soon. We move on to Teresa's Super Bowl commercial with Caroline Manzo. And Andy asks her how that came about. Are you guys friends now? And she's like, no. She said that she wasn't happy when she heard about it, but she's like, huh, all right, I agree to it. Andy goes, oh, when they like backed up the dump truck full of money? And she goes, huh? <laughs> he goes, they paid you a lot for it? Oh yeah, yeah, they did. Now we know where she got the money for the pool. The pool that Sabra Hummus built. <laughs> She did say that Caroline wanted to talk to her first, and she's like, uh-uh, no way. But they did, and they talked with her attorney, Jim, on the line with them, so it was like a little conference call, I guess. And she said that, you know, it was bad right away, that Caroline was like, oh, we are gonna talk. And Teresa said, excuse me? Sandy asked her, did you talk about the accusation you made on Watch What Happens Live? Which, if you don't remember, that was when she and Joe was on via satellite and Teresa sort of alluded to the fact that it might have been Caroline Manzo who was the informant. So she goes, no, we didn't talk about that at all. We just talked about how she was like during the season. I said to her, I think you're a fucking shit person because you were friends with me and then when my sister-in-law and Kathy came on the show, you dumped me and, and you were friends with them. Caroline said, well, they did nothing to me. Whatever. You're gonna always think that you're right and I'm gonna always think that I'm right. So we're never gonna get anywhere. Then Andy asked her if she really thinks that Caroline, you know, called the feds and Dolores jumped in and said, no, Teresa, she wouldn't do that. That's not her personality. Andy goes, you're defending Caroline? I'm not defending her, but he, and he goes, yeah, you are defending her. And she goes, well, yeah, I am. So then like Teresa conceded that she might have said it the wrong way. 
who would ever imagine that Teresa might say things the wrong way? But she said she doesn't really think Caroline called the feds. But the way she talked on the show. And then I don't know if Andy just couldn't wait for her to spill it. Because he interrupts and he goes, it led other people to kind of have their antennas up about you. Yeah, yeah, that. There's a viewer question asking Teresa how she could blame everybody else for her going to jail. And she goes, I'm not, I'm not. I accept it like a big girl, but it's just my opinion of how I feel. Andy asked her if there was any chance that she and Caroline would become friends again. No, no, because I don't think she's a good person. We shift gears to talking about her marriage with Joe. Andy asked if the girls know now that they're separated, and she said, yeah, well, they don't love it, but they understand. He asked if they were getting a divorce. She said well, they're not there yet. They're just taking things one step at a time. Then we get a montage of how great their marriage was. Andy said, after years of defending her husband amidst cheating rumors, Teresa finally revealed the truth about their marriage. Then we get this lovely montage. It's all the greatest hits of Joe Judice. Teresa telling the girls that he says the craziest things like nobody else would ever want you. And when she was prom dress shopping with Gia and he called and revealed that he never wanted to marry her in the first place. Then when they were at the Jersey Shore and she told everybody about the burner phone and the other woman. That montage ends with Joe and Teresa basically discussing the end of their marriage in Italy. We come back to the ladies and, you know, everyone's blotting their eyes and they talk about how the girls love their daddy and they will always have his back and she's okay with that because you know she wants them to love him of course so andy asked her what do the girls think about the way he treats you and she said well we never really discussed it but i always tell them that daddy is a good father to you, but I don't ever want you to let a man treat you the way your father treats me. Yikes. I appreciate that she is telling them that, but showing them is so much more impactful. Like if they grew up with years of listening to their dad berate their mother, that's more ingrained in them than their mother just telling them every once in a while, listen, don't let a man treat you like that. Hopefully they won't, but I also think that there's gonna be this underlying part of them that will just think that's normal to be treated like that or to be spoken to like that. Ugh. Now the question that's asked of Teresa is, were you happy in your marriage? And she said, yeah, I was. The only time he ever really acted like that was on the show where he was like trying to be macho, you know, Josie Joe. The camera pans to Melissa and she's making faces like, uh -huh. And then Andy turns to Melissa and said, is that true? Longest pause ever. And she goes, no, that's not true. It wasn't just on the show that he treated her that way. Okay, Teresa does not like this. She gives a little look and, you know, I could be reading into things the wrong way, but to me, it looked like she gave Melissa a look like, are you seriously saying this in front of everybody? Melissa said, I mean, he hated the cameras. It was much worse when the cameras were on, but off camera, he wasn't like kissy huggy. He didn't pamper her or anything like that. He wasn't super affectionate. And Teresa said, but he didn't treat me bad because like I wouldn't have stayed with him otherwise. Now she's getting defensive because she sees that it's making her kind of look like an idiot for staying with the guy. She ends by saying, we had a great marriage. Melissa, you could do a lot better. Long silence, a lot of looks around the room, Dolores, Teresa, yeah. 
And then we go to a commercial break. Next, Andy talks about how a year ago, he just ran into her in Miami. Then we see the picture of them together. And he said, and you know, I just thought to myself, I saw you with a cute guy. I thought he's cute. Joe's in the can. I hope she's getting her pipes cleaned and good for her. So what really happened? And she's like, no, we weren't just friends. I didn't get my pipes cleaned that weekend. <laughs> That's her story and she's sticking to it, guys. Next, we get a montage. This is the very beginning of the season, you guys, when Margaret, Jackie, and Melissa were at dinner and they were talking about Teresa and this young guy with a backpack, no less. Melissa was defending her, saying, listen, she said that nothing happened. And that's when Jackie said, uh, if it walks like a duck and it quacks like a duck. Then we see the Jamaica trip when Margaret talks about the 21-year-old whiskey and Teresa likes them, 21, something like that. Then she tried to pretend, I was just talking about the whiskey. If I was referencing the article, I would have said so. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, I don't think anybody's buying that, Margaret. So Andy asks Teresa what the girls thought of these cheating rumors. And she said the girls didn't know. They're not on social media. They don't know that kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't know any kids that are not on social media. My guess is they're just not talking to her about it. Anyway, she said none of the kids knew except Gia who was told by her brother-in-law. So Andy's like, yes, so it was Joe's brother Pete that told Gia, and she goes, yeah, and I ripped him a new asshole. I said to him, you talk to me, me, me. You don't talk to my kids about that stuff. So Andy said, does he blame you for Joe like going to prison? And she goes, yeah, I think so. Probably they all do because of the show. I didn't even think of that that he would have gotten away with this stupid stuff if he wasn't on a TV show. But yeah, that makes sense. I mean, how funny though, to blame Teresa being a public figure and not the fact that Joe had illegal dealings, right? Oh, it's not his fault. Jackie does want to make a point to tell Teresa that at the time that she said that about the, you know, well, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, that she was coming from a place of having just a couple days prior seen the video that was out there of Jennifer impersonating her. And so she was really mad and upset. And she said, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about anything. And I just said it. And Teresa was like, no, no, Jackie. Yeah, I know. It's fine. It's fine. I don't blame you. I mean, are Teresa and Jackie in an okay place? Like for real? I know they kind of said that, but maybe. Andy asked her if she felt like now that Joe's in Italy that she's free to pursue a relationship with another guy now. And she's like, yeah, of course. I mean, they're separated, so yes, of course. <laughs> that was a dumb question. Anyway, he asked if she had been with anybody since, and she said, no, no, but I want to. He said, what about the pool guy? And she goes, no, he's a dear, dear friend, but no. And he asked if he was single. She said, yes, he's single, but I don't know. I guess she wouldn't go there. Then he asked her what type of guy she's looking for, and she said, everyone, and everyone else is kind of like chiming in for her and not letting her talk. And Dolores said, someone that makes her laugh, she loves to laugh. And she goes, yeah, I do. I don't remember ever really laughing with Joe. Does that surprise anybody? When I think of Joe Judas, I do not think witty, great sense of humor <laughs> at all. She said, you mean like physically? Like what? And, and he said, I don't know, just whatever. And she said, well, last time I was with an Italian guy and now I want to be with someone who's Jewish. Okay. Anyway, everyone's very excited. Jackie said, oh, I'm going to set up you and Dolores with some Jewish guys that I know. And she goes, yeah, I heard that Jewish guys make great husbands. And he said, and great lovers. <laughs> Jennifer suggests that she goes on J-Date. 
All right, so then Andy talks about a rumor that before they had Adriana, she and Joe went through in vitro to try and have a boy. And Teresa admits, yes, that she did. And he said, so now that you're not with Joe anymore, would you want to try and have a boy with somebody else? And she said, yes. How old is she? Maybe she's not as old as I think. Is she in her early 40s? I guess that's fine. So she talked about freezing her eggs. Melissa goes, oh, honey, did you hear that? Your friend wants to freeze her eggs. Jennifer, don't call me honey. And she said, what do you think of that? Do you think she's too self-absorbed to have a baby? And she goes, no, I don't. Anyway, they want to explain why is it okay for Teresa to do it in your eyes, but not Melissa. And Jennifer said because she's with somebody new and she totally understands that she might want to have a kid with this new man. Melissa, oh, so it's not okay for me to have a kid with my current husband? She said, no, again, I'm going to sound like I am just the great defender of Jennifer, but I know what she means. You're starting a new life and a new marriage with a new man. You might want to have a child with that man. Whereas Melissa, same husband, they already have three children together. It does feel a little bit more like it was just kind of a whim because she wants a baby around, she's bored or whatever. Like it did seem more of like a fake storyline to me too. So like I do kind of get that there is a difference, but well, you know, everyone over on the right couch is going nuts over that. Okay, we are back from a commercial break and all the husbands now join us on stage and they're all carrying Bill the exact same way they carried him when he was passed out drunk. You know what's cute about it is that I really feel like all these guys are buddies now. I think they really like each other. Andy told Bill that Jennifer looked great and he asked him if he did the work himself and he said yes that he has operated on family members before that does seem a little weird to me too I just think it would be tough to like divorce yourself from the fact that this is the love of my life and I'm cutting into her flesh and operating you know what I mean like I I don't know I think it would be hard to do that on somebody that you had an emotional connection to we find out that Frank Catania has a girlfriend She does not live at the house with them. Dolores said he has a curfew. Or did she say she had a curfew? Because they asked how old she was and she's 30. Joe Gorga and Evan are like clapping at that. Mm, That was disappointing. We talked to Joe Benigno about the fact that he has let other contractors into the house to finally get work done on their house. And he said, yes, but I have to approve them and they have to be friends of mine or something like that. Oh my God, and then I can't even believe Andy asked this. He goes, this is a rude question, but Margaret, are you finding yourself attracted to any of them? (laughs) My God. She's like, no, none of them. So the whole question of sex gets brought up. Andy asked Evan how he liked that the whole thing about the fact that Jackie doesn't give him blowjobs came up and he's like, oh yeah, that was great. And he said, I just kept thinking that, you know, hey, if this causes some peer pressure for her, I'm just gonna roll with it. Um, And then a viewer asked Joe why it was okay for him to show the guys Danielle's sex tape but he doesn't want his daughter even learning about sex education at school. He's like, well, of course, I'm with guys in their 50s and 40s. It's it's way different than my 13-year-old daughter, and he doesn't want her to learn about it until she's 33 years old. He wants to push that off as long as possible. Then, since he brought up Danielle's sex tape, Andy asks all the ladies, what did you think about the guys watching Danielle's sex tape? Melissa goes, ew, why would you want to? And Dolores said, well, I wish they hadn't. And Joe Gorga goes, oh, come on. You guys are all hypocrites. You know it. If it was one of us, if it was a sex tape of Evan and you guys were off on a trip somewhere, you would all be like, ooh, let's check out this sex tape with Evan. Teresa goes, I mean, if it was Evan, yeah. (laughs) Damn, she really does want a Jewish guy. 
Evan is super hot, though. Now, Andy reads a viewer comment to Frank saying, why don't you just re-propose to Dolores and kick that David out to the curb? And he said, you know, I love Dolores, but that's not my place. I'm not surprised. I didn't think he was going to propose to her, but you know what? That's up to Dolores to decide. I think she's just going to have him move into his house and they're going to date that way and see how that goes. And Dolores is like, Oh, come on. I have the best of both worlds. I have a guy who says I could do whatever I want. And, you know, I see a guy, a nice guy, every so often. That's not what you want, Dolores. You did just tell us earlier that you were not happy with this situation. You wanted him to propose. Moving on is probably what's best for her, not continuing to just see him. Well, what do I care? She could do what she wants and she could continue to see him while she dates other guys. Maybe she'll find a guy that she wants to get serious with and then she'll stop dating him. But I guess in the meantime, why not hang out with David if she's happy hanging out with him? Okay, so this is interesting. Now we're talking about the feud between Jackie and Jennifer and the birthday party. Andy asks, Evan, what did you think of the birthday party that Jackie threw for your kids? And he said, well, I thought it was fine. I mean, we tend to believe that we shouldn't spoil our kids and that the more you give them, the more they'll ask for, and we like them to kind of earn it. I think we provide a very good life for our children. Then he asks Bill. Bill says, I don't criticize other people. And Andy goes, you just leave that to your wife. Everybody starts laughing. And then, you know, he realizes, I have to go home with this woman. So he said, "I listen, my wife likes to celebrate life. And Jennifer said, he wouldn't like it if we had a party and we only served pizza. And he goes, that's true. You know, if you're having a big crowd, we like to do that. And then Jackie said, and that's fine, but you don't have to criticize everybody else. Bill is sitting behind Jennifer, and you see Bill's face like this. Yeah. And Jennifer said, yeah, I mean, you know, there's a spectrum. We sometimes go overboard, I'm sure. Okay, we'll move on. Andy asks Bill, how did you let these guys turn you into a Jersey Guido. Dolores goes, what did I tell you, Frank? If you do anything to Bill Aiden, I'm coming after you. <laughs> I think that's so funny that <laughs> she was like protective of Bill. And he asks Bill if he regretted the fishing trip and he said, no, it was a great experience. <laughs> okay. Then he asked Jennifer, what did you think about Joe Gorga? saying that your husband should bang you more often. And she goes, uh, listen, honey, my husband's fully loaded while you're shooting blanks. Time out. Um, I hate to tell you this, but that has nothing to do with like pleasing a woman, okay? Whether he's shooting blanks or not. In fact, you might even have more fun knowing that you're not gonna get pregnant. But of course, that brings the conversation around to how much we've heard about Tarzan and then only to find out that three sperm. Joe Gorga's like, hey, that's all you need. I could get you pregnant, Andy. Jennifer goes, you abused my husband all season long about the banging. And I just find it very suspect for somebody who talks about sex so much. And by the way, we've got Olivia out of our bed now, so we're making an effort a lot more. We're trying to do it at least once a week. Joe Gorga's like, hey, see what I did? I love this. I love to motivate people. Melissa goes, he's a motivator. And someone else is like, he's a sex motivator. And everybody's laughing, even Jennifer. Listen, the guys on this show add so much to the show. They are such a great addition. Oh, side note, I heard, of course I can't remember where, I heard that the reason that the guys were on the final trip, you know, even though it was only to Jersey Shore, but the reason the guys were there is because they are the only 
husbands of any franchise who also get paid by the show. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but it should be because they are a wonderful addition and I would watch a show just about them. Would I? No, just kidding. I wouldn't. But I love how they are on this show. I do think they enhance it. And I could not say that about any other franchise. Listen, New York doesn't even have any husbands. Okay, back from the commercial, the sex conversation continues. Apparently, after hearing about Jackie and Evan not going downtown on each other, Evan has gotten some offers from people. What else were we talking about? Margaret and Joe do it in the morning. I don't know, a bunch of stupid stuff. But the interesting one was Frank. Dolores says that you two never hook up. Is that true? Frank's answer, I go by whatever Dolores says. Oh boy. Dolores, to me, the look on her face is, oh my God, is not uh, super pleased with his response. So now Andy's kind of prying, like, I mean, has it happened? Like, have you ever slipped up? And he said, you mean slipped in? <laughs> not that I can recall. Oh my God, they totally hook up. And you know what? More power to him. I don't care. David doesn't deserve any exclusivity from her. I don't know about Frank's 30-year-old girlfriend. Maybe she doesn't deserve to have that happen. But, sweetie, you know he's living with his ex-wife. That alone would make me think that something's happening every once in a while, maybe. I do believe that people can just be friends. I really do, that men and women can just be friends. However, they were married for many years. They were in love with each other. If they're having a really good relationship now, I could see it slipping into something physical. I just never wanted to like call her a liar because I don't know, but now, oh God, you guys. Then Jennifer said, are you like sexually attracted to each other? Dolores, yeah, I mean, Frank is a great looking guy. Frank, Dolores is the most beautiful woman I've ever laid eyes on. Jennifer's like, ooh. And then Joe Gorga goes, my prediction is you guys will be back together very soon. And Dolores goes, you've been saying that for 20 years, Joe. Andy reads a question. If you weren't with your current husband, who would you go for in the group? Before I even watch this next part, I can tell you right now, Teresa is going to say Evan. <laughs> she wants him. I don't think any of the wives are going to answer that question. Let's see. Okay, none of the women want to answer that, but Margaret said, I know Joe. He loves Dolores. And then Dolores said, yeah, he, he's my special guy. We have a special relationship. I forgot about them. So yeah, that was an easy one, but the women aren't gonna answer. Andy said, well, Teresa, you're single. Who would you pick? And she's like, I'm not gonna answer that. And he goes, I think I know who. And Jennifer goes, well, there's only one Jewish guy here. Evan. I mean, seriously, if I had to answer that question, and my husband's probably watching this, I love you. For research purposes only, I need to answer the question. Uh, I too would pick Evan. And not just for his looks, but because... <laughs> this is going to be so bad because my husband is also Italian. But because all the other guys, with the exception of Bill, oh, you know, he's my second choice. The, only because I've never been with a vampire. What I was going to say was the other guys are so macho Italian. I, I can't with that. <laughs> My husband's not like that at all. Anyway, I love you, honey. It's my job. What am I going to do? Okay, we just come back from the next commercial break, and we are outside. A car pulls up. Danielle gets out. Come on, sweetie. She's got a little dog 
in a carrier that she takes out and puts in a stroller. It is a very Cruella de Vil vibe I'm getting right now. Oh God, she's got an entourage, including Marty. Marty, you stupid, ugh. Sorry, cannot stand the guy. Margaret and Joe, you need to throw him in the pool. Your husband's in the pool. You need to do that again. He's just her, Danielle's little lap dog. It's disgusting. All right, Andy talks about how Danielle Staub is going to be coming out a little later. But before that, we delve into Jackie and Jennifer's friendship or the demise thereof. We get the montage from the very beginning of the season, the video, Jennifer doing her impersonation of Jackie and everybody laughing who was there. We see Jennifer talking to Gabrielle about it and her saying that you should apologize. We do see her apologize, they, they make up. Then the birthday party with just pizza and Jennifer in her confessional. I don't wanna hurt Jackie's feelings, but this party is just like an afternoon play date at my house. <laughs> my favorite thing about Jennifer is her going from her very sweet voice in my culture the women are very demure and it morphs right into the street tough i will cut a bitch it is so delightful to me oh god okay this gets ugly um we come back from that and jennifer says to be fair i did not post that and Andy said, yes, it was Teresa's video. Teresa posted it. And Jackie said, that's why you're such a poor role model. Because you defend behavior like that. You just did the video. And then because you didn't post it and your friend did and you're defending that, that's what makes you a poor role model. And then Jennifer's like, I don't care. I don't want to be like you. We've got the split screen because they're both yelling simultaneously. And Jennifer is saying, would I want to grow up to be like you? Absolutely not. Then Margaret says to Jackie, I would want to grow up to be like you. Jennifer, who cares? I don't care. I think you're boring as shit. Jackie, who, me? Jennifer, who, me? What do I stutter? Yeah, you. Oh my God. Seventh grade, you guys. We are all back in seventh grade. Jennifer says, yes, you. Then Jackie said, it's bizarre to me that somebody who just sits home getting plastic surgery would call me boring. Jennifer, you are boring. Money can't buy you class, but it can't buy you personality either. Shout out to Luann. <laughs> you know Luann is at home right now going, yeah, girl, get it, girl. Now, this next part is interesting because Jennifer actually says something that I think might upset her idol, Teresa. She said, I just think it's very interesting that I'm taking all the heat for a video that I didn't even post. And in fact, when Teresa was going to post it, I said, do you think Jackie's going to get mad? And Teresa went, whoop, hmm, send doesn't matter. Teresa's like, I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't care. I don't know if Dolores is saying, you know, something about throwing under the bus and Jennifer goes, is that throwing her under the bus? I don't know. That's what happened. Uh, Teresa doesn't seem to care. So I guess I wouldn't worry about it. Teresa pulls out the, she's an adult. I thought she could handle it again and Jackie said and you know what if I was there it might have been different I might have laughed but it's the difference between laughing at someone and laughing with someone Teresa and I were not in a good place that was definitely meant to you know she was laughing at me but Jennifer and I were friends at the time and Andy said is that fair to say and Jennifer said yes and Jackie said it made me mad that a friend would do that Jennifer's mad now because she thinks that Jackie gave Teresa a pass and not her. And she said, you tiptoe around Teresa. And Jackie's like, no, I don't. And even Andy said, uh, she doesn't tiptoe around Teresa. I think that was the problem in the first place. 
And then Melissa said, sweetheart, you're the only one that tiptoes around Teresa. She does, but she's not the only one. Because I think to an extent, you guys all do it. One of the questions from the viewers was, Jackie, are you embarrassed that you threw a party, you didn't have tables, napkins, any anything, and then you threw a box on the curb with the party favors? She's like, I'm not embarrassed in the least. Do you think 11-year-old boys give a shit? And Andy's like, I don't. And you know, yeah, it's probably true. I, I've never had boys. My daughter would have cared, but I guess really the thing is I would have cared. I just would have wanted to put a little bit of an effort into it. But, you know, she is winning. <laughs> okay, so then Andy said, Melissa, would you throw a party like that? Melissa said, well, I also am guilty of throwing extravagant parties. And Jennifer goes, so what? It's not a case. You don't have to feel guilty about it. Melissa, who said I feel guilty about it? You just said I'm guilty of throwing extravagant parties. Now, maybe you didn't say I feel guilty, but it was definitely implied when you said I'm guilty of throwing extravagant parties. You didn't say I love to throw extravagant parties. You know, I mean, is this my third time defending Jennifer? <laughs> Sorry. Oh God. Dolores said, I actually brought pictures of the parties that I used to have for my kids to court. I used to shut down the street. I had carnival rides. I had like pony rides, everything. I went all out for the birthday parties. And I actually brought pictures of those parties to court to prove that this was the lifestyle that I was accustomed to when I was in divorce court with Frank. <laughs> and Andy goes, how did that go for you? And she goes, not well. <laughs> So what's your point exactly, Dolores? There's a whole lot of crosstalk with Jennifer and the others, mostly on the other side of the couch, and I'm not going to get into it all. We're rehashing all the same stories that we talked about through the season. Obviously, I get that's what a reunion is about, but it's like it's too much. They're talking over each other, and then Melissa starts talking over Jennifer, and Melissa's like, oh, you don't like it, do you? You don't like that when someone talks over you. It, oh, blah, blah, blah. Too much. Now we're talking about the sorry, not sorry t-shirt that Jennifer brought on vacation. Jennifer admits that it was passive aggressive. She claims that she has no problem apologizing to people when she's done something wrong. <laughs> But when that apology gets thrown back at her, then she acts out. Well, you told me to put it on a t-shirt, so here you go. Then Andy said to Jackie, you have said that you two will never be friends. Do you think you could ever reconcile with Jennifer? And Jackie said, I actually don't want to. I try really hard to keep toxic people away from me. And oh my God, the music's like, dun, 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 dun. Like, so suspenseful, and then we get looks from everybody. <gasps> ooh, ooh, like it was so bad. Bravo, you are trying to bring the drama here, and it just isn't dramatic. It just isn't. How many times have we heard a woman say that another woman was toxic? I mean, that's just a Friday afternoon at my house. <laughs> anyway, Jennifer said, that's okay, same, ditto. You're no picnic. Cut to the dressing room. Danielle's getting her makeup on. And you guys, here's how I know that I will be sorry when Danielle is gone from this show. Because just cutting to the back dressing room while she's getting ready gets me all excited. <laughs> what is she gonna do? What is she gonna say? I'm filled with anticipation. And I don't feel that about anybody else. <sighs> I'm gonna miss Danielle. Okay, so her makeup artist says to her, are you excited to go on? And she goes, oh, hell no. I need to be heard. So I've asked that I be seated with Andy because Margaret's mouth starts moving the minute I'm addressed. It's not a plea, it's a demand. That is where part two ends. I cannot wait for part three. 
Oh, shoot. I just saw previews for next week. I don't even know if she's going to make it on stage. She's refusing to come out. So my guess is they are not going to have her seated right next to Andy. She's probably going to be down at the end. I hope we're not going to be let down. We got to tune in. We have to find out, right? All right. Thank you guys so much for joining me for this recap. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed to Jill Informed, please do so. Click on the bell icon to get a notification every time I have a new video come out. And as always, I read all your comments, so please leave a comment. For sure, I will be back here next week with the conclusion, part three of the reunion of the Real Housewives of New Jersey. And I hope you join me. I'll see you next week. Bye.